So what's for lunch today then? Um, I've got bacon today and... Um, Cabbage, carrots, parsnips, and uh, I cook with an onion because I use it for... Um... Do you wrap your carrots in foil? Because it keeps them nice and fresh in the fridge. Never did, no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the important issues in the last stages of people's life are, first of all, I think, uh, good health. I mean, when we're getting older, we're all conscious of aches and pains and creaking joints and goodness knows what else, and therefore uh, a good health service, a good GP, good health service. Secondly, good company, uh, good relationships with other people, so that as you get older you don't feel isolated and, and lonely. Uh, and then obviously I think that uh, growth in the spiritual side of the person is also are very important as a person gets towards the end of their life. I think it's important all through life, but I think uh, later on, perhaps particularly important for some people. Richard! Richard! Where are you? Come on, boy. There's a good boy. The important issues, I think, when you're getting older is to have, if you can, have a hobby. But for a lady, it might be knitting, sewing, or doing some something with their hands like tapestry or something like that. Uh, for a man, if it's gardening or fishing or playing golf, whatever it is, it's having an outside interest, outside the home, uh, where you meet people and you keep your mind active. If you don't go out and meet people and you sit at home and feel sorry for yourself, in my opinion, you're finished. I don't think the voice of older people is being heard. I think for a variety of reasons. One reason is that older people do not fall all into one box. You know, I've said, here you have a generation that's actually 48 years long. Well, people are 40 years long don't necessarily all have the same views. Secondly, you know, they will have different views between themselves. You know, they come from different backgrounds, they have different attitudes, etc. So they don't all fall into one box. And at the moment, they're not united by anger at how older people have been treated. Now, that may come, or it may not. And we may, in different ways, have to make sure that the issue of care of older people is on the agenda. But we complain more now yes. mm -hmm. than we yeah, did, we than, the, yeah, than yes. the, our, our parents then, yes. their yes, generation. Yes, we don't just accept things. No, no, no we don't. That we query. Yeah, the reason why. Yeah. I can remember years ago, my, a friend of mine, she's dead now, bless her, um, we went, went out to Sunday lunch. Mm -hmm. And um, this meal was put in front of me. And I looked at it and I thought, well, that doesn't look like a Sunday lunch to me. Mm -hmm. And I was absolutely disgusted with it. So after looking at it for a few minutes, I thought, no, I'm not going to put up with this. <laughs> so I picked it up. I said, I'm taking this back. So Iris was there with me. Mm -hmm. And um, so I took it back. And I said, excuse me, what do you call that? Mm -hmm. Their faces were a picture. I said, that is an absolute disgrace. Uh -huh. I said, Why? you cannot call that Sunday lunch. I've got um, the meat. I can't tell you what the meat was because I've forgotten and there was a few, two or three roast potatoes, which you could hardly see, and a spoonful of tin peas. And that was no all. Fresh and that fresh. was it. And no. Nothing. And it didn't no, look appetising. Towards... It looked absolutely awful. Oh, they went into a panic. They said, you can order whatever you like off the menu, have whatever you like. I said, thank you very much. When we got back to the table, Ara said, I'm very proud of you. Yeah, <laughs> Years ago, we wouldn't have. You wouldn't have. Oh, no. no, we would have accepted, accepted it. it. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I think there is quite a lot of sadness uh, amongst o older people. I mean, first of all, the actual business of living to a great old age, let us say late 80s or early 90s. I mean, that means, first of all, all the people. Uh, you really know, they've all died before you. 
so you can feel really quite isolated. And as we know, a good number of people, when they get older, uh, they begin to get a little bit uh, confused, a bit disorientated. Uh, sadly, many people suffer from Alzheimer's or some other kind of uh, dementia. Um, so that can be, uh, can be very, very sad. It's not to be able to talk to them again. I think that's as much the loss as anything. But it's just one of those things one thinks, well, no. The old lady whose funeral I went to on Monday, she had, she went to church, but she was very, very sorry for herself when her hubby died. And uh, she was weeping all the time. And when I say I said goodbye to her on Monday at her funeral, I thought, well, the dear, poor dear is at peace now. No more crying, no more suffering, no more feeling sorry for herself. always liked older people all my life. Um, I think a sense of a, a different world view, um, a sense of a, a different generational view, um, particularly when I was a child, you know, I was always very close to my grandmother. Um, it always seemed to me that she was much better news than my parents. Um, I think it's a different world view, a kind of relationship that's often uncritical, um, a willingness to stop and tell stories. Um, an actual experience of historical events that I didn't live through. It's a mixture of things. I've just enjoyed the company of old people. I wish that I had uh, asked my grandmothers more about their childhood, etc. Although I am fortunate enough that I do know quite a bit about my forebears for several generations back, simply because I've researched the matter. But um, the young people now don't want to know. I mean, I say to my granddaughters or my grandchildren, uh, something I did, oh, they're not interested in that at all. Oh, no, Granny's old hat, <laughs> that's yours. Because it's such a very different world from when I was a child 80 years ago to what it is now. And they, the young people, can't imagine what it was like. When I was a, a young curate, and I used to do a lot of visiting for old people, I was struck by how old age seems to intensify the character of a person in a rather uh, frightening kind of uh, a, a way that, if you like, nice people tended to become nicer, and nasty people tended to become nastier. Uh, so that their ca essential characteristics were, were sharpened. So that if you go to visit people, there were some wonderful contacts with, with, with people. Uh, and there was also some that you came away feeling, well, she's a grumpy old so-and-so. I think a lot of older people when they're facing the end of their lives, look at the things that they intended to do and what they've actually achieved. They always, you know, draw up a balance sheet for themselves. I think lots of people do feel a sense of loss of what, for what they didn't do. But I don't think that's as, as depressing as, as just sheer loneliness is. Um, I mean, you know, I think we all come to terms with the fact that at any stage in our lives we haven't done everything we expected to do, we haven't realised all our ambitions, all those things left undone. 